Hey guys, this is Bill, and we got a quick one for you here. Today we're going to take apart a Bendix Magneto, just a four-cylinder Bendix S4LN-21, uh, 20 series. Basically, it's a 20 series um, Bendix Magneto, absolutely typical of what you'd find in many Lycomings. This came off of a Lycoming 0360, um, and this is uh, this is going to be a short one. Like I said, and the whole intent of this is to tell you why you should really pay attention to your magnetos. So. Here we go. Follow along. Okay, guys, I'm going to do the uh, voiceover thing because uh, I think it uh, works a lot better. First thing we do, as you would expect, is take the nut and washer off. Uh, we took the drive gear off earlier. And then the next thing you think, well, we'll just take this big washer off. but. Uh, the big washer on the impulse coupling is actually kept from remo being removed by the um, Woodruff key. So we're going to take that out. Once we get that out, get our magnet back and pull the upper impulse coupling washer out. We're going to bring that out and basically we end up disassembling the impulse coupling to a point. Normally the spring will stay inside the housing. This one for some reason decided to stay with the center section. We'll inspect the spring and all that. On an overhaul, you'd inspect the spring. On a 500 hour inspection, you would, pardon me, on an overhaul, you would replace the spring. On a 500 hour inspection, you would inspect it. So, now you're gonna see me put the nut back on the shaft a zillion times. I'm just totally paranoid. I do not want to mess up the drive shaft threads at all, so. You'll see me putting that nut back on and off, on and off. Uh, God forbid I drop the thing, at least the threads won't get jacked up. Or if I'm using a puller or a press or something, uh, I don't want to mess up the threads. By just messing up the threads to scrap that rotor, if we scrap the rotor, then we end up basically making the magneto unrepairable. Putting the puller to pull the impulse coupling off this is really kind of critical in that you want to make sure you're not impinging on the flyweights. This is kind of a real deal. The flyweights are kind of critical, but it uh, they can be broken. Um, I've done it, but uh, they can be broken by improper placement of the puller. So what we're doing is we're making sure that the puller is on, clamping the housing, but not impinging the flyweights at all. So I'm making sure the flyweights have some clearance there. Uh, now this one was stuck on there hard. I mean, really stuck on there. Um, I've had them stick on. Now what that tells me is this thing hasn't been off probably in uh, a long time. Uh, based on the condition of the magneto externally, eh, it looks kind of humble. They come in that way. Um, however, the uh, they do normally just pop loose. I'll give it a little pop with a uh, leather mallet. Uh, tighten it up um, and then this was actually kind of funny uh, I was trying to figure out what's going on so I went to the other side of the shop uh, for a little bit and then uh, again I had the pressure on there and it uh, it kind of decided to pop on its own which was kind of neat so I didn't have to get in there with anything uh, any heat or anything like that so that was kind of kind of nice um, so we had to take the nut back off the shaft that's, uh, that's just what I do. Anytime there's a threaded shaft on a piece of machinery, I t typically have a uh, slave nut that is in the toolbox um, that uh, is set up for those threads. So, I again, I try to try to keep an eye on that. Okay, that one jumped on the floor. No big deal. We'll go find that. Uh, pick that up. Put that back up. And then... Uh, put the tools back up I'm trying to keep the workbench as clean as I can nice and organized flyweight comes off and we're checking the thing checking things see how, see how they look we'll do our clearance checks uh, later uh, springs on this are good overall the thing looks good it's filthy but it looks it looks okay um, so now we are uh, we're pretty well ready to start disassembling the uh, the case however there is one more one more Woodruff key on this because there's an impulse coupling you have a Woodruff key for the impulse coupling and a Woodruff key for the upper bushing so it's uh, 
this one has, uh, because it has an impulse coupling, it has two Woodruff keys. Um, a non-impulse coupled Magneto would only have one Woodruff key on the taper. So this is kind of a, uh, because it's an impulse coupled Magneto, it's, it's got some extra stuff there. Now we can open the uh, breaker compartment and disassemble the housing of the Magneto. The breaker compartment, you're gonna find numerous configurations of these. Um, the older ones have vents on them. Again, this is a non-pressurized Magneto, but you'll find some that have a circular vent on the back with a little hood. You'll find some with a slotted vent. You'll also find some with a P-lead on the bottom of the housing, and then they moved it up to the back of the housing. So that's going to be on the older ones, you'll see some different stuff. Here's one with the round style or has a little hood on it. Now we'll just continue removing the screws. We're checking for a condition of pretty much everything we're, we're, as we're disassembling it. I'm looking at screws right now. These screws have been rounded out pretty well. They'll get all new hardware. Looking for the inside of the breaker compartment. Uh, there's oil in there. Oil's not supposed to be in there. It's supposed to be in the back of the engine. So that tells me that the Ford, Ford seal has probably been compromised. Um, now we'll take the points out. The little screw there uh, that I just put away, that is, uh, be careful on that because that's a $4 screw on its own. But now I'm getting the leads kind of loosened up and taking the small steel finger out, making sure that doesn't get misplaced. Then we'll take the condenser out of the housing. This will be tested. Um, on this Magneto, actually, I tested it and it, um, it failed miserably, so this will get a new condenser. Uh, a lot of times these screws are, they've been in there forever. That by the, by the condition of these screws and what it takes to get them out, it's uh, telling me that this thing has not been looked at in a long time. You can also see that ground, that brown stain on the condenser, that is bearing grease that is slung out of the bearing. This condenser has a metal stamp part number, which tells me it's older than the hills on its own. So I'm kind of doing a little archeology span on what I'm taking apart. And I'm finding that this particular Magneto has not been serviced or had any love given to it for a very long time. The points that came out were original Bendix points. So that just tells me um, whoever has been, uh, if anyone has done, been doing any work, it's been OEM parts. So that's, uh, that's not really indicative of anything, but what I'm uh, gonna do is uh, get all the hardware out, use my magnet, get all the hardware out, and then take the points out itself, look at the condition of the points itself, see how it looks, see what kind of condition they're in. Um, on this one, they looked okay. They look typical for what I would expect a long service set of points to look like. Nothing crazy. Again, we're just looking for things that could key us in why this magneto may not have been working or uh, especially when I get one that I have no back history on or just to see if anything's getting ready to come apart. The screws on the Bendix are held in with uh, lock washers. The screws on a slick Champion are held in with uh, Loctite. And what I'm doing here is just taking the vent plugs out, seeing as I have the Magneto in a kind of a large chunk, so to speak. It's easier to take these plastic plugs out. The upper plug has no vent holes. The lower plug does have vent holes. Things you might want to be real mindful about when you're cleaning your engine is essentially stay away from the Magneto. Stay away from the Magneto. Stay away from the alternator, the generator. Here you can see a trace of oil on the very back of the Magneto. Not a good thing. There should be, that should be absolutely dry. So continue on, just take the, uh, taking the screws out. These screws are all gnarly too. They'll get all new hardware. This thing will look like a new penny when we're all done with it. And just suck them out with a magnet and uh, good to go. That'll go in the, that'll go in the scrap parts pile. Then we're just gonna slowly pull the housing up, poke the primary lead in through the little hole in the deal, make sure we don't pull on that too tight. And 
just kind of doing a quick look, see what we have here. Um, one half the magneto, we're going to pull the carbon brush out, that will be replaced. Looks okay, so that tells me that the, what, by the, looking at the face of that, that tells me that the tab on the coil is probably in uh, the proper orientation. So, again, a lot of, a lot of clues left, right, and center as to how this thing's working. Not a very complex piece of machinery, pretty simple piece of machinery, but it does, like any other piece of machinery, need occasional attention. Taking the circ clip off for the distributor gear and uh, pushing that through. Plastic gear, check condition on that. Looking at the housing, and what I'm seeing on the housing is I'm seeing uh, most of the uh, there's a, there's grease on the inside of the housing, which tells me that the bearing has pretty much slung all of its grease out. Um, the gear itself looks okay. There's no damaged teeth. Um, things look good there. The electrode looks good, so they'll, they'll uh, clean that up and do some further inspection. Then we'll remove the distributor block. The distributor block gets removed, and then it has an oil light bearing in it, which is an oil impregnated bronze bushing. So what we're going to do is take that distributor block, clean it, prep it, and then we will actually resurface that oil light bearing by uh, loading it up with oil and uh, baking it. So that's all per the per the book. Um, and this thing is also covered with oil too, so that cannot help your ignition at all. You can see the grease is kind of slung out, and like I said, the brown slime on the condenser was also more grease. So. The grease is supposed to be in the bearing, not outside the bearing. Again, based on this condition, what I'm seeing, this magneto will definitely get all new bearings. On an inspection, you don't necessarily have to replace the bearings, but we do. Felt seal, that's supposed to be a nice dry clean felt seal. That was full of oil and crud. This is the outer seal, uh, outer felt wiper. And again, that's just for kind of a lube and keep dirt out. That looks okay. The block itself looks okay, it's just full of oil and all that. When I started taking this apart, I, uh, my hands were absolutely squeaky clean and now I keep getting dirtier and dirtier as I take this thing apart. Now we're going to take the coil out. We're taking the coil out because we're going to refinish the housing and we'll take the coil out, fill all the screw holes with uh, screws, uh, media blast it, clean it, and then um, refinish the housing. So. It'll look, as I said, brand new. Coil ends up getting an ohm check on the primary and secondary, double check that. Um, real important to make sure that all meets spec. So there's a couple things that can go bad in a magneto. The, the biggest things are the coil and the condenser. We're double checking the, the coil clamps to make sure that they're good. Um, make sure they're the correct configuration. Taking those screws out putting those off to the side and then we're going to remove the coil now the coil you can if you don't have the magnet in proper position it's real hard to get out so all you have to do is turn the magnet about 90 degrees and you'll see bloop, there's no magnetic force because it's a magnet the, uh, the magnet itself will make a uh, magnetic force and hold that coil in Double checking the tab making sure there's no cracks kind of doing a preliminary look make sure there's no cracks in the red plastic uh, as I, I was kind of going earlier, we're going to give the uh, shaft a whoop and get the uh, seal off. Again, take the nut off one more time. But the two real killer items on a magneto are going to be the coil because it is a plastic resin type molded product and it can go bad like the dashboard on your car. And the condenser. The condenser is an electrolytic type of device and it can go bad through age. The rest of it the rest of the magneto is pretty well mechanical, bulletproof stuff. It just needs an occasional lubrication and looking. Uh, there are some wear items, things like the points, but short of that, the magneto is a great piece of equipment. Uh, there's electronic magnetos out there, sure. You can do all sorts of stuff, but um, depends on how much money you want to spend. We're knocking out the oil seal here. This one's just being real obstinate. Normally it pops out pretty good. Again, this thing's been baked in there for I don't know how long, had to give it a little extra oomph. So now that housing is pretty well clean. There's nothing on the front end. We've got the seal out. We're done with it. 
the other housing we're done with and now it's onto the rotor. We're going to take the screw out of the back end that holds the cam in. The cam has a, it's kind of directional, it's either left-handed or right-handed. Uh, there's little arrows that are molded onto it and that will tell you on assembly how to put that together um, and pulling that off. The reason I'm pulling this off is this magneto will get some uh, all new bearings so in order to get access to the bearings we're going to have to remove the uh, that on that end and then pull off the races. Later we will go and pull the uh, races off with a puller and I'm looking at the races here and I'm seeing what I'm seeing is I'm seeing no grease in the races at all it's all slung out it's gone it should have been replaced a long time ago so kind of frustrating but again another reason why we're gonna put all new bearings in this thing checking it out we're looking at the different configuration this is the latest configuration rotor it's a good magnetism um, it's round, there are no brass inserts, and it does not have a flat side on it. So this magnet is good stuff, good to go. Wrap it up, get some loving. Again, it's, uh, I've got my sacrificial nut on the end there, then I wrap it up, make sure nothing bad happens to my magnet. Okay guys, that's about it for taking apart a Bendix S20, S200 type Magneto. Uh, pretty simple. Most importantly, anytime you're working on these, make sure you have the latest, greatest manuals. Yes, you have to get those on subscription from uh, Teledyne Continental, but uh, make sure you do that. You can see that we had a lot of issues with this Magneto as far as oil in the chamber, grease was slung out, um, just a bunch of other things. So we'll talk about that probably on some later ones, but um, that's it. For this episode, quick one, taking apart a Bendix S20, S200 Magneto, Bendix, TCM, uh, what have you. So, Hangar Rats out.